Okay, hi there guys. Quick video for you today. We're just going to be looking at setting up Superbase for Postgres in NA10. Now, if some of those words in that sentence sounded a bit confusing, I want to begin by explaining exactly why this matters and then we'll get into onto building it out. So pretty much anything you would use on the internet, whether apps, websites, games, is going to have a database on the back end. Typically, on a very small level, platforms like Google Sheets or Excel are fine for small data. Once that data starts to get really complex or, or quite long in the tens or hundreds of thousands, you would typically need an SQL database. Now, there are a few of these that have been around for a few decades. MySQL, Postgres are probably the, the, the two most well-known. We're talking about Postgres today. It's like having a large, reliable filing cabinet that you can put all of your data on the back end and you can retrieve anything you need at speed, safely, effectively. It can store simple things, complex things. In my head, there are two very pressing use cases um, for why I use SQL. One is for data analysis and the other one will be for building out apps that we'll be doing on this channel where for any app you really see on the back end, you tend to have a database that can store a lot of that information. The one caveat or downside to Postgres is that it's definitely not the most user-friendly. And this is where Superbase comes in, which effectively acts as a backend built on top of Postgres. It's super user-friendly and has built-in API as well, which allows us to connect it to our automations, to our workflows, to apps um, effortlessly. It has great authentication and we'll be able to access all the information in Postgres via Superbase. So in a nutshell, Superbase is extremely helpful because it's going to give us a massive, easy to use database for anything we choose to build on the front end. Cool. So with that said, I'm now going to show you how to set up Superbase in NA10, um, especially for SQL. And we'll also touch on um, Vector Store at the end. Okay, so we'll just begin by adding our first step and we'll go to agent. Uh, okay, and so in our case, we're going to go down to SQL agent because that's the, the primary use. I'm going to choose Postgres. Obviously, it's already got a credential, but we're going to set up a new one. I'm going to create new credential and uh, this is where it will take you to. So we're going to have to fill in all this information. To, to do that, we'll need to set up a Superbase account, or if you already have one, retrieve the necessary information. So let's just go over to Superbase, superbase.com, and um, set up an account. And once you have your password, um, remember your password, we're going to need it at a later stage. So keep that somewhere safe. And we're just going to sign up. So then you'll, you'll need to go over to your inbox and just confirm. Okay, so once your it, once you've confirmed in your inbox, it's going to bring you to set up in, in your organization. So feel free to change the name as you want. I'm going to keep everything as is. Create organization. You can then create a database password. And select and create a new project. So it's then going to bring you onto this that's the welcome screen, if you can call it that. And we're just going to press connect at the top. Okay, so this page actually has a lot of really useful information. It can look a little bit overwhelming at the start. Because obviously we're setting up Postgres SQL, we're going to go over to type and we're going to look for PSQL. And we're going to scroll down to uh, transaction pooler. And a lot of our information is here. So if we um, remember our the information we need to put into NA10, which will be um, the post information, database, uh, user, password, um, and port. Most of the information, obviously, the, the password will be the password that we set up Superbase with. Um, but the rest of the information will actually exist here in transaction pooler. So. Um, the host bit, and you better to recognize each bit by the initial. So H is host, P is um, port, um, 
the database, which is obviously Postgres, um, and U is the username, which we'll do a copy here as well. So you're just going to put each of those bits into their respective spaces in NA10. So we'll start with host, and it's everything after the EH, so AWS. We'll just kind of drag this. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go over to NA10 and I'm going to replace localhost with that um, database. That's already set as Postgres and it's the same in the transaction pooler, so that's fine. User will need to replace that. So we'll go over to um, the U and we'll just drag that to the end and we'll press copy that and then put it here. And then um, the port the default is set to 5432, but I believe we've been given 6543. So we're going to copy that across. And then lastly, passwords. You just enter in your passwords. Great. And then once you've done all that, you're just going to save and we should see connection tested successfully. Great. So that is all set up. Let's just call it um, super power base setup demo. Save. Okay, great. Um, and so what we're going to do, we're just going to quickly set up um, the model and memory, and then we'll just check whether it actually has the access to the information we think it does. So we'll go to model, and let's just put anything you want, really. I'm trying to use... Um, to GBC, um, I'll tell you what, let's just use uh, GPT-4, nice and old school, and then memory. Uh, so you can also, we'll have to post your chat memory, and we you will see that it's already connected to the newly set up credential, so that's great. Okay, so what we want to do at this stage really is we just want to test whether it is connected to our database. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put some data in there and then we're going to query it from NA10. So we're going to go over to our database. We're going to go to table editor. We're going to, go to create new table. We're just going to upload some data. We're going to open up this. So what this is, it's the Club 100 for the Premier League. So the all-time scorers in the Premier League. Okay, go press save. Call it Club 100. Cool. Okay, great. So now that's in there. So if we just go over to our uh, over to NA10 and let's just ask it to say just to check whether it uh, can find it. So what uh, data can you see? Okay, the database contains data from football, football players who have scored 100 or more goals during their careers. This includes information such as player's name, number of goals they've scored, number of games they've played. Yep. Okay, great. So it's found it. Okay. And that is how you set up Superbase for SQL. I know that another very popular use of Superbase at the moment is the Superbase Vector Store for unstructured data and generating, you know, for RAG. I'm going to cover that in a separate video and um, that will come out very soon and we'll build out some use cases for that as well. But we're going to wrap it up there. Hopefully you found this helpful. Now we've got this, we can do some pretty powerful stuff with data analysis, building apps, doing lots of cool, funky stuff, which we're going to do in future videos. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.